Take off your sandals. You are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are not alone. You belong to me. Brothers and sisters, I hope all of you are doing well. Please keep me in your prayers. I am going through so many attacks and trials right now, but praise God, they all bring me closer to Him, and and I just love Him so much. And I'm going to share a few of those experiences with you real fast before I move on to the dreams and visions portion. I am seeing so many giants and Nephilim, and even last night uh, I had the fallen had me in some kind of lineup, you know, and I'm there and. And they have all these people who had abilities, but like one was a werewolf, one was uh, like a vampire, this other thing was some other kind of monster. And I was there in line and it, you know, and I'm like, I am Archangel Raphael. I said, I am cherubim. For some reason, that's what I said when I was standing there. I've had them try to come so many times and try to act like they're really the good ones. I'm sure a lot of you have had that experience too, where they try to lie to you and act like they're really good. You know, they don't know why they got the bad rap. You know, of course, never listen to that. They are evil, brothers and sisters. I've been seeing a lot of them, and I've even had them tell me that they, or the government, or somebody has created 10 Nephilim giants. I don't know if that's true or not, brothers and sisters, but they were just freaking out, saying something like, the gosh, somebody like the government has actually has 10 Nephilim giants they created, and it was only supposed supposed to have been a year ago and I, I'm, I guess they if it's true what was told me they had grown almost 120 something feet in one year now they gave me some type of measurement and I never heard it before I think it started with an S but I can't find it online and and I was like a foot and this person was like, no, that's too, kind of too big, you know, the way I was being told. So I said, like, the size of an apple kind of in length. And I think that was more right. And so I did a, a, a measurement of what I was told. And, uh, yeah, it came out to about 126 feet in one year. And so, oh, my goodness. So I'm not sure if that's true, but if they have stuff that big growing, then I don't know. I think they're going to let it out pretty soon, you know, just like in the days of Noah. And I was also taken to this land, and, and I saw, I was just standing at this, the feet of this giant. Now, this giant, I don't think I was taller than its toes. I think I was below its toes. I mean, this thing looked a couple hundred feet tall. It was standing outside of a building, and I'm just looking at it, you know, and it's just kind of, kind of standing guard there. So I walk into this cement, I'm not sure what kind of building it was, almost Sumerian, you know. I walk into this building, and I see a couple of them playing basketball. And they kind of look way down on us and they threw a bell of hay. When the Bible says that we were as grasshoppers before them, I mean, we truly, to me, I was smaller than a grasshopper. I was more like an ant compared to these things. I mean, they were just ginormous. The numbers I was given for this vision or dream actually matched, also matched what I saw. I was given this at 1140 in the morning and it was, the length was 137. So. 1140 in Strong's is an evil spirit and the other one is a structure or building and that's exactly what I saw. I saw evil spirits giants in a structure of a building and the number or the length I got was 137 and that says, well actually another Strong's definition was A-E-N-O-N, -E a place in the Jordan Valley and I've never heard of that before, Anon. Maybe that's where it was, I'm not sure. And the 137, Bible will, it says curse, flood, 
despise, strong, goats, oak, and cum. You know, so it, it was so strange how even the, the Bible will was matching for that as well, and the, the strongs. I'm gonna share a couple of these experiences. I had this one too where all of a sudden, boom, this huge gray male giant with extra arms was charging at me, and we were about to fight. I guess that's what's going on. I mean, he was charging at me and uh, I felt like something was about to clash there and then that was the end of the vision. But he was gray and he had extra arms. And yeah, that was just a really crazy sight to see. I'm gonna share this one too. I don't think it's from the Lord, but I wanna show you how they can tell you things that matches other stuff that the Lord has told you. But there's little bitty details here and there that you, know, you kinda can tell it's not from the Lord. And so I was in this dream where I think I was on a bus and we're traveling around just like in a lot of the other visions and dreams. And at some point, uh, I'm on this straight and narrow path with these two Asian guys and they look like twins and they were to my right and to my left. And we were walking down this straight and narrow path, but instead of walking, we were floating. They kind of just were half hugging me and we were just floating down this a straight path and on the side were kind of like forest maybe and maybe not as foresty as forest but there were trees and grass and stuff like that on the sides and so we go into this classroom that I was in and as we're in this classroom we're listening to music and this whole other classroom comes to visit our class I want to mention too that the music that was playing was being sung by Michael Jackson and I think that was symbolic of Michael the Archangel in this class, I noticed that one of my younger, I'm not going to say childhood, you know, younger adult crushes, like she was in this classroom sitting down. But here's where it gets strange. I think one of the teachers was a female and the other teacher was a male. And I all of a sudden audibly start to hear the two teachers talk in this classroom. And this is what I hear one of the teachers say. I heard you have the big goat, Moses, in your class. And the lady goes, because the male was saying that, and the lady teacher goes, yeah, the king. They were just both talking about who's in their class. And the reason why I don't think this is from the Lord is because I'm not a goat. <laughs> Moses, Moses is not a goat. And But the interesting thing was, the number I got for this, well, I got two numbers, but one of them was 233. 233 in Bible will is firstborn, teach, cherubims, gather, and bring so I just thought that was pretty interesting so yeah I, I just want to share these type of things because I know I 99.9% of the percent of the time I don't share the bad stuff with you guys but I wanted to share a couple of the things that I'm going through I mean I have dreams uh, like recently where all of a sudden I see this big giant head in front of me and he's like oh, 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 just laughing also, and this part isn't funny, if you are into witchcraft, please stop. I've had so many people trying to do that against me, it's not even funny. I, I don't know if you're out there and if you're doing that, please stop because your place will be in the lake of fire for all eternity. And I, I pray to the Lord that he shows whoever's doing that the lake of fire so that they don't have to go there, that they can repent and turn to Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, just the other night I had two women witches try to hold me down the bed to rape me. Uh, I, I have visions and see them laying down their, their tarot cards and, and I, I have people, uh, the Lord allows me to see them leaving their houses, two males, I don't know if they're homosexual or what, but I see these two males in their houses who are doing witchcraft. I mean, the Lord allows me to see that there are people out there who are doing witchcraft against me like crazy. And, you know, please repent, repent of your sins and turn to Jesus Christ before it's too late. Brothers and sisters, there are so many people in, in, in comment sections pretending to be Christians who are really witches and warlocks. And I'm not telling you to go and to accuse any of our brothers and sisters because I should know it's not a good thing to be falsely accused. It's, re it's really a hurtful thing. But just be aware that there are people with false names in comment sections acting like they're Christians, but in real life they're there to lead you astray. Make sure to keep your guard up and to stay in prayer and know that the fallen are here. You know, just a few nights ago, I was in a vision and I'm, my back is up against some lockers and I see all these beautiful 19, 20, 21 year old looking females and males and they're walking around, they're looking at me and they're like, do you remember us? Uh, and then I'm looking at them and I look around and I know that I know some of them. And I was like, are you fallen? 
and they're kind of like, yes, and they get up and they start to walk. They kind of get nervous because I realize they're falling, and then I can't control what I say in the vision. You know, I, so I say, is this why I remember some of you? Because some of you are fallen? And that answer was yes. Being Raphael before the fall, knowing some of them, how crazy is that? And brothers and sisters, they don't have your best intentions at heart. Keep your eyes focused on Christ. Just like when Jesus walked on the water and there was that storm going on and Peter asked, Lord, call me to you. Can I come to you? Can I walk on the waters? And as long as Peter kept his eyes focused on Christ, he walked on the waters. But as soon as he started to waver in his faith and he took his eyes off of the living Christ Jesus, he fell in the waters. For the time we are in right now, it is necessary we have to have our eyes focused on Jesus and to not let up you know to not let our focus or our gaze off of him in the next vision that I had it was an audible and I think I heard the enemy talking to our Lord Jesus remember I keep telling you guys about the visions I have of being Jesus's firstborn son a twin and Michael being the other twin or you know John or Elijah the spirit of and so I heard the enemy talking to Jesus, and this is what I heard. I heard, the first thing I wanted is to see the pain and the suffering of your son. And this was a vision I had, and I believe it was the enemy saying that to Jesus. And this happened at 1228, and I also got the number 21, but 1228 in Strong's is a flask. You know, it's really weird because I see that all the time. A flask is something that Archangel Raphael is known to have in his hands. If you kind of Google it, a flask full of oil, anointing. 21 in Strong's means to exult, to rejo rejoice greatly, and my father. 21 Bible will is island come feast and I've been seeing that island a bunch and it indeed is about to come or we are about to go to it and I'm so excited about that one this next vision was a really cool and I like you guys opinion on this one I saw rain clouds just like we're gonna have at the rapture but if you can imagine it three levels of rain clouds so imagine from left to right or right to left you see just a, a, a rain clouds in front of your face but then you see above it a second layer of rain clouds then above it a third level of rain clouds now just like a regular rain cloud they're dark you know dark stormy type of rain clouds but in each level on a different maybe one one's on the left maybe one in the middle maybe one on one or the other side there is a light shining or coming out of the rain cloud at a section of each of the three rain clouds does that make sense to you so at the bottom you might have a little small bright light coming from um from in the rain cloud at the bottom one and then maybe it's at the other side on the top one and then maybe it's in the middle of the middle rain cloud. There's like a light coming out of the darkness of that rain cloud. So I see three levels of rain clouds and each level has a little spot in the rain cloud where there's a light coming out of each section. So I thought that was really neat. You know, is that the Lord? Is it, is it the angels coming? You know, is it symbolic of the three different levels of glory that it's talked about in scriptures? One being as the stars, the other as the moon and the other as the sun. Remember, not all are going to have the same glory. We all are rewarded according to our works. Daniel 12, 3. Those who are wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, but those who bring many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So are these three different layers of clouds, three different taking glories, if that makes sense? Um, that thought just crossed my mind too. I was told that there were three different gravity events about to take place by the Father. And when he was telling me about that, he, he was giving me visions of, um, I was guessing it was raptures that were taking place. So I believe there are three different events that are going to take place. Was this symbolic of that? Maybe so. So I just wanted to share that with you and get your opinions on it. I have my own thoughts on this, but I'd love to get you guys' opinion on this vision. And if you're curious about the three different glories I was talking about, you can find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 40 to 42. I'll go ahead and read it. It says, There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory, 
so also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption so I, from what i take from this you know there are also different degrees of glory that we have depending on how we serve the lord you know the, the wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament but those who bring many to righteousness will have the higher glory the glory of that of the, of the stars you know of that sun as it rolls over the hill just that's what i want you know i don't want to have just the glory of the wise i want to give my all to the lord and i know you guys do too so i wanted to bring that to your attention it's a pretty good scripture in the next vision that I had, I saw a word in parentheses. I saw for. The word for in parentheses. And you guys know what that represents because I talk about it a lot. The four brothers, the four throne angels. You know, just recently the Lord told me that he was, if I remember correctly, he said something like he was proud of the bride as he was proud of his four sons. And I knew what he was talking about. Michael, Raphael, Uriel, and Gabriel, his four sons. And the numbers that I got for this were at 5.09 in the morning, so that's 5.09. And in Strong's, it means from above. How cool is that? From above. And I also got, for the length of time, I got the number 23. And you guys already know, when I see the number 23, I relate it to the man-child, because that's personally what he showed me. And there's also different meanings of gathering up, you know, so if I remember correctly. So yeah, that was a pretty exciting one when he shows me that. And they, you know, after all these videos if you, that I've been telling you guys about, you know, all these different dreams and visions over the years, you guys see how he gives me confirmation after confirmation, vision after vision, dream after dream, and they're all puzzle pieces confirming everything. It's not me saying, guys, this is what I think, or I believe this just because I believe it. No, I, I'm just telling you what my dreams are saying, what the visions are saying. It's the Lord who is giving me the visions and dreams. It's not myself. Yeah, and it's not me keeping it from you guys. It's just me lovingly saying, look, this is what I'm seeing. You know, and, I, and I just lovingly tell my friends, my brothers and sisters about it. And right as I was telling you guys about that number 23, I look at my clock and it was 2.23 in the afternoon. So I'm telling you guys about a vision where I got the number 23 and I looked down at my time, which I hadn't done in a while, and it was on a 23. So there's another confirmation from the Lord. This next vision was a good one. And it happened at 4.44 a.m. There's your 444. So at this time in the morning, I have a vision of Jesus and maybe one or two others. They, they fly down from the heavens. They kind of just kind of fly down just a little bit, still in the air. And then I hear the Lord tell me something. Now, there were two words that I didn't hear, but I'm going to tell you what I heard. So the Lord comes down and I hear him say I have gathered blank blank and so my son and so I when I say blank blank those are two words I don't remember so he flies down and Jesus says I have gathered blank blank and so my son and so that's what he told me and this happened at 444 and 444 in Strong's means a man and 444 Bible will begat families redeem daughter come cake two times tables two times judge and you know oh wow and also got 46 which is another Adam and and which is another man thing there so just some cool stuff the Lord is giving me um, he's gathered something maybe his armies or the angels to come and get everyone everyone so I don't know be excited the gathering is about to take place and this I believe will happen at the island and maybe there is that mountain at the island I'm not sure but get excited because I know it is so very soon oh this next vision was a neat one I heard someone say I, I think I was seeing a man raising his hands up and he was saying if I remember correctly but I know what he said for sure. He said, thank God you have been swimming to the mountain, Moses. Yeah, so I think I saw a man, and if I remember correctly, his hands were raised to the air. And I have written here that he said, thank God you have been swimming to the mountain, Moses. How cool is that? Did you guys remember the vision I shared with you a few weeks ago or a month ago? The one about me and a girl were swimming and, and people were kicking me and trying to get me to slow down. And then God put me on a chair or a throne above the racetrack. He anointed it with some kind of fluid. And I started to zoom 
Remember that one? Well, yeah, I've been having the swimming ones and all that, the, the race. And yeah, that's what he said. Thank God you have been swimming in the swimming to the mountains, Moses. And I got the number 10 because it happened at 10.07 p.m. And it was for 38. So 10.07, Bible will. Two times is four for the four. Receive, clothe, vineyard. Uh, for Strong's 38, that's the length I got. I got the Father of the Sea and Sanctification and Consecration. 38 Bible will is His glory, His heart. So I believe that's symbolic of us racing in this race of life to our next destination. In the next vision that I'm going to share, I saw the real ark. I saw Jesus, His backside, sitting at a desk or on a mercy seat. And I saw on His side, both his sides the image of two angels with wings staring at each other and I saw this reminds me of in the scriptures you know Moses was allowed to see the backside of the Lord and I got to see what it would look like you know the real image of the ark of the mercy seat with Jesus sitting at it except it wasn't a carving it was the real thing what's neat here is that the number I was given also matches up I was given the number for this vision of 113 now 113 in Strong's is Lord and that's exactly who I was looking at the Lord now 113 in Bible will I got son three times take and out four times and usually when you see a number repeated that many times it can be significant so I see the Lord and then in 113 Bible will it's son three times take and out four times so hopefully we are about to go and get taken out of here in the next vision, I believe the Lord was telling me something about Gentiles not returning. Now I'm gonna use the word blank because there's one word I don't remember here, but I heard the Lord speak to me and I heard it wasn't for the blank for the Gentiles to return. So the Lord is gonna have me helping to return those who are true remnant to Israel. Um, when I say true remnant, I mean the 12 tribes of Israel. There, you know, if you, I don't know how it's going to work. If you're grafted in, uh, you're probably part of a tribe. But if you are Gentile, then you're probably going to get raptured, and you have nothing to do with the the Great Exodus or the Second Exodus of returning to Israel. This is just my opinion of of, of what I believe I'm being shown. And not that it matters, but there are so many people here in America involved in cultish activities, believing that they are Hebrews when they are not. Having dark skin does not make you a Hebrew. Yes, there are Hebrews in all shades and colors, but the color of your skin does not make you Hebrew. The remnant will come from all over the world, brothers and sisters. It was just the other day when the Lord blessed me to see part of the Exodus again. I've seen it several times. If you could turn to Jeremiah 23, we're going to read 7, verse 7 to 8. Do you guys remember the vision I just told you about in the other video where I was up high and I got to see uh, the second exodus as if I was uh, helping the Lord to lead the exodus? And they were coming from a certain direction. Well, a brother pointed it out. And I don't know why it didn't click with me at the time, but they were coming from the north. Jeremiah 23, 7 to 8, and there's my 23. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. So I saw them walking. I saw the people. I was looking at the people. I could see how they looked during this exodus, the second exodus. And they looked similar to the people of the first exodus, except the ones in the first one were a lot taller. And I say this lovingly, but no, when I looked down, I didn't see an African people traveling. I believe there are Hebrews in all shades and colors. And it doesn't matter what your skin color is because salvation is available to all through Jesus Christ. Most people use this scripture wrong when they say there is neither male or female, Jew or Gentile. That scripture is talking about the issue of salvation. They try to use it and say, well, nobody is a man or a woman in heaven or this and that, and that's being used wrong. That scripture is talking about salvation. Doesn't matter if you're black or white. Doesn't matter if you're a female or if you're a male or if you're a Jew or a Gentile. Salvation is available to all of us. And praise God, it doesn't matter how you look because God looks upon the heart. Look at King David. You know, he was the, the weakest of the family, they say, the smallest, the runt, you know, out with the sheep. 
And God told the prophet, look, I don't look and see as man sees. You know, I look upon the heart, not upon the outward appearance, not upon the, the outward countenance of a man, but upon his heart. And I pray for that same gift. I love all of you. I don't care what color you are. You could be green, blue, gray, black, orange, white. I love you. I, I care about you dearly. And you know, when we get to heaven, brothers and sisters, do you realize that we're, all of us are gonna look different? You know, I, I, could, I, I could be white and be in heaven and have darker skin. You could be black and be in heaven and have white skin. We don't know how it's gonna be up there. I just had to bring this up because I notice the pride that is coming from that cultist group and when I say that cultist group, I mean the ones who are pretty much leaving Christ and just worshiping their skin color, you know, and this is leading them down to the lake of fire and they don't even realize it. They're awaiting to be just the rulers and to kill the white man and to, to rule over them. But do they realize that when judgment comes down, they're going to be judged? Judgment must begin in the house of God. And when they're in the lake of fire, they're going to be like, well, I thought I was going to rule. No. God does not look upon his skin color. He's no respecter of persons. Yes, he does favor. He's favored people in the Bible, but he's no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter what you look like, how beautiful you are, how homely you are. He loves you and he loves you for you. And he sees in you for the person you are. He takes out that heart of stone and gives you a heart of flesh. And I pray that we are that way, that we follow the example of our Lord and that we judge each other based on our, not on our outward appearance, but judge each other based upon our hearts and the love we have for one another, not upon our skin. I want to finish this video by going through a couple of visions with you guys kind of quickly. In this first vision, I was being shown something. I don't remember what it was, but I heard someone say one year anniversary. The numbers I got were 1158 and the number 11. So 1158 in Strong's is Daniel the Prophet. 11 Bible will is Maranatha, Firebrand, Linen, Garments, Greenness, Exalt, Portion, and All. In the next vision, I was Moses and I was wearing a weird outfit. I had like a top hat on and a suit, kind of like in the olden days. But I knew in the vision that I was Moses and that I was with a woman and we were leaving leaving a scene and I knew that we had to get out of there quickly. I think this woman represents the bride of Christ and the number I got for this was the number 44. Some say it means chosen. Uh, 44 in Babawa means to birth or child. In Strong's it means a fish hook and my father is help. It also means to redeem and beget tabernacles. There's a few other meanings but yeah we were just leaving the scene as fast as we could. The next flash of vision was a quick one. I saw two twin buck deers with racks, and I believe it was represent, representing me and Michael, Raphael and Michael, twins. I've been told through my research that uh, racks symbolize authority. This happened at 1228 in the morning. So 228 Bible will is two times firstborn, cherubim, bless three times, separate two times, chariot, crown, north, and child. So yeah, I just think it was representing Michael and Raphael and having authority. I had another vision, and I can't share the whole details with you, but I was being told something about the restrainer, and that happened at 3.30. So 3.30, I looked at Bible wheel, and I got green, priest, and lead. Which leads me to the next vision. It was an audible. It was a pretty neat one. I heard Seer of the Dawn. Seer of the Dawn. That's pretty neat to think about. The next vision was self-explanatory. I, I saw a, a coffin rising up into the air. Which we know is symbolic of the dead in Christ rising. So I think it was just the Lord showing me that the dead in Christ are indeed about to rise. This will probably be the last vision I will share on this video. But I saw in front of my face a vision, a picture of all kind of royalty stuff. Imagine seeing a, a king with a crown and then seeing a castle behind him and all this royal stuff just all up in this picture. It just was a whole scene of royalty. And as I was seeing that, I heard someone say something about the language of royalty. That's what I heard. Uh, that's, all, that's all I remember hearing. Someone say, the language of royalty. Now this happened at 11.05, so I got 11.05 and a number 32 were my two numbers. So 
32 in Strong's is an angel and messenger, and my father is might. And 1105, which is the time this happened at, in Bible Will, though I think the very first word I saw there in Bible Will was rule. The Isaiah 66 man-child, the nation, is about to be born, brothers and sisters. And if you want to have those blessings, those rewards in heaven, you know, we are all given rewards based on what we do for the Lord, you know, off of our works. So please don't be idle. You know, give all that you can to help invite souls to Christ. If you make videos and you tell your dreams and visions, make sure that you invite your brothers and sisters to the Lord. Make sure you let them know that they have to repent, to repent of their sins, to turn from them, to forgive all who have hurt them, and to surrender their life to Christ because they must be in relationship. They must make Jesus their Lord. They must obey Him. You know, I didn't start having all these dreams and visions until I said, all right, Lord, I surrender my life to you. You know, I made him Lord of my life. And when I gave him that, he took over and I've never been happier. I've been so blessed. I love him so much. I don't need any of this. I know I'm telling you guys my dreams and visions and they sound so amazing. The Lord is awesome, but I don't need any of those rewards. I just want Jesus. You know, as long as I have my God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I'm okay. Like I said, I can do his dishes and come visit my dad and I, I'm all right. All these other things are added blessings, and these blessings will be given to you according to the works that you do. I love you all. Please come unto Christ. The time is so very short. He loves each and every one of you so much. Until we meet again, I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come in the final days. Oh, knowing God has held you in reserve for nearly 6,000 years. You have been with you for a marked generation. For a marked generation. For a marked generation. Earth at this particular time was God has saved for the final inning and harm that you have You must be prepared to meet your God. Oh, youth of the noble birth. You're part of the Lord's royal army. An army there are things for each of you to do. That no one else can do. You will preserve as well as you are special. You, 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 you. Me.